everyone, this is Nikki from the design team and today I'm here with a super bright Halloween card. I added lots of textures to this card and I'm going to show you how I created it and also show you some of the new products from Cat Scrappiness. If you hadn't done it yet, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and then we'll get right into this video. We're going to start with the die set called Witch's Brew, and this die set has so many fun things. It has a way that you can just make your cauldron, or you can make that cauldron a shaker card. So really cool. Lots of bubbles, lots of little witch's legs and shoes. I love the shoes with cute little buckles that you can put on them. So just lots of fun stuff. I'm going to start by cutting my pieces out of Bristol Smooth Paper because I'm going to do a lot of ink blending. I decided I wanted to stick with only three colors for this card, and so I used some colors that really look good together. When I can save on ink blending with these little small pieces, I do. This is the Catherine Pooler Lime Ricky ink, and you can use it and blend, but sometimes it's just as easy to stamp it on your pieces. So I kind of do a mixture of both to give these a little bit different color. When I ink blend, it's a little bit lighter than it is when I stamp it straight on. Next, I'm going to do the letters. So this is called Spooky Boo, and you need to remember which way your letters go because I'm going to make them kind of ombre. So remember, they're dripping down. So I'm going to do the darkest part on that dark drip, and I realized I did it wrong on the B, so I had to kind of fix it. But I'm trying to make them generally a little ombre, and I'm using an ink blending brush with Tiki Torch from Catherine Pooler Inks. When I'm finished ink blending, this ink stays wet for a little while. So after I get them done, I'm going to immediately add some embossing powder. For this one, I'm using something that has a lot of glitter effect to it. You've got lots of options. This one's called Halo, but I wanted to have it chunky and glittery. Um, so doing this before, you, once you've cut out your letters, sometimes people feel like that's harder. So you could also just create the ombre effect on a piece of paper do your heat embossing and then cut your letters but for me i can grab a little piece of these letters and heat them up and it works fine and just look at how much dimension and sparkle these have so cute so i'm going to add a piece of white actually two pieces of white card stock to the back of each one just to make them stick up a little bit um, this is just something to give your card stock a little bit more strength and also just to make it lift up instead of using foam tape to make the background, I used a super um, bright purple. This is called Flirty Fuchsia from Catherine Pooler. And I'm gonna ink blend this on the background and then I'm gonna splatter it with water. So I wanted this to be super bright and this is my third color for this card. So we've got the orange, we have purple, and we have a bright green, which look great for Halloween. I sprayed this with water and then I'm gonna use a paper towel to remove some of the color. So just lay a paper towel over the top and then you can see where your white splatters are. I just love the look this gives. Let's make some texture on our little cauldron here. We're going to use heat embossing powder. So I am using a black glitter powder and I've added some Versamark onto my cauldron. And the same as we said earlier, you could just do a whole piece of this black and not have it already cut out if you were worried about how you were going to heat emboss this using some tweezers to hold on to it. But for me, you know, sometimes I don't decide what I'm doing on my project until I've already um, done part of it. So this worked perfectly fine and I'm going to show you how it looks. It looks amazing. It looks so much like a cauldron. So here's how it looks when you're heat embossing it and it just gives it some texture. So when I think of a cauldron I think of something textured and shiny like this so it turned out perfectly for me. Don't you just love when that happens when something turns out exactly the way you were hoping. <laughs> Next I'm going to add the letters and my bubbles to my cauldron and then we'll put the rest of the card together. I did decide to also do the witch's shoes in that same black glittery um, stuff that I used on the cauldron. So I just used my Versamark pad, added some ink to them, and then I'm going to use the same embossing powder so that it coordinates. So next we will take our background. We're going to add a piece of the new lumber yard paper. This is a new pad that um, Cat Scrappiness has and I really like all the different types of wood that there are. So I'm going to add this to the bottom as my flooring for the cauldron. 
Before I start sticking things down, and I would suggest doing this, figure out where the feet of your um, witch are going to be because those shoes are a pretty good size. And so you need to make sure you got your legs and everything set up on your card so that it will fit. So I did a little bit of working with this before I decided what I was going to do. And I am going to do something different with these legs, but I just wanted to make sure that I've got everything fitting on the card before I start putting down my cauldron. All right, so now I need to glue everything to the back. So I've kind of given myself a general idea on how big I want these legs to be. I'm using a double-sided adhesive because um, it, it just was easy. And I'm gonna make my legs just slightly different going out and then I need to double check that everything still fits. So with the legs, there are several different dots. You can do stars, you can do polka dots, you can do stripes. I thought the stars would be easiest and I did ink blend the front of the legs with that black soot. And then the background that's orange is just the Catherine Pooler ink swiped on a piece of paper and I cut out the orange leg from that paper. So to put my shoes on, I did the same thing with some tape, and this is a double-sided sticky tape that is an eighth of an inch, and I'm just gonna add it to a couple little areas. The problem with the shoes is that I'm getting some bulk on the card. So I end up grabbing, I had some extra stripes from um, some other legs that I made that were double-sided adhesive, and I thought, you know, I need something to prop this up, but it's not quite as thick as a piece of foam tape. So I'm going to use some extra cardstock and put it behind kind of the curl of the toe to make sure that I can get this to lay flat on my page. So here's what I'm talking about. These pieces of orange right here are extra pieces of cardstock that I just cut and put them on the back. I'm gonna add a little glue to those. I could put an adhesive um, strip on them, but it's very thin right up at that toe. So I decided to use some glue and that will make it where it is flat against the card versus part of it sticking down and the other part wanting to pull up. I don't know if you can tell that, but it just works perfectly. I hope you enjoyed this card. I had so much fun making it and I hope that I gave you some ideas on creating some texture and just having a lot of fun with these Halloween cards. Make sure that if you're gonna shop for anything today that you go through the links in the description. That really helps me out a lot. And if you haven't done it yet, make sure to hit the subscribe and like button. I appreciate it so much. Have a great day, bye.